Hey everybody, Tony D and Little Joe with another early hot take. Guess who it's about? Uh, <laughs> the man who dominates all media at all times, Donald J. Trump. And uh, he and Melania have tested positive for the beer virus. And they have started their quarantine and recovery process. And, uh, you know, he said something very positive on Twitter. Twitter. We will get through this together. Good for you. Um, not a lot of danger in this. Uh, here's a really funny picture. <laughs> um, not a lot of danger in this, um, uh, uh, you know, the fact that he has this. You know, unless the uh, deep state tries to use this opportunity to take him out. Um, you know, it's he's probably going to recover. He probably doesn't even have that many symptoms. It's possible that the test is wrong. Uh, you know, the, 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 the testing is only about 70% effective. It's possible this is a false positive for both of them and Hope Hicks. Who knows? I mean, you know, the viruses mutate. Uh, he seems to be asymptomatic, meaning he doesn't have any symptoms. So he's just going to probably ride this out over the next two weeks. It does sort of throw up the, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the debate. The next debate, like, is it going to happen? How are we going to do this? I mean, seems to me, being the U.S. government and having an unlimited budget, um, it'd be pretty easy to build uh, some sort of shield, some sort of plexiglass shield around the president, and a, and a and even a little tunnel, and just let him walk down it and walk to the podium, and you can keep Sleepy Joe isolated from him. I mean, I don't see a problem with that, um, you know. Uh, I, I'm sure Trump would be up for it. It's probably going to end up being some sort of digital debate, which will be lame. Uh, and of course, you know, I'm sure the president's mic will go out and then, oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. President, you're, you're, you're having, you're having problems. We can't quite get you in. Uh, uh, hold on. Let, we'll let Mr. Biden talk while, while we adjust the technical difficulties. I mean, we all know that's coming. Um, but we'll see. I mean, Trump's very clever. This could be a clever ploy. I mean, some people keep suggesting that. You know, Trump isn't really sick. He's just doing this because he wants to get out of the second debate. I don't know why. Um, everybody can't stop talking about the debate. At first, it was like, oh, yeah, Biden won. Eh, Biden didn't really win. Biden didn't do as bad as a lot of people thought, which is sort of a victory for him. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's Donald Trump dominated. I mean, he certainly came off looking better at the S show, as they called it. Um, you know, I, you know, nobody moved the needle really, although Trump went up like half a point, um, and got his half point bump. You know, at this point, you're talking about the kind of people, again, that you're going to bring over to your side. These are people who don't tune into the debate going, Donald Trump, Hmm. I wonder what he's about. <laughs> oh, Joe Biden. I, I, have I heard of him? Oh, I better watch this debate. I mean, we all know who these guys are. We pretty much made up our minds about them. It's just the sort of, you know, fence sitting people who are still going, oh, I still can't make up my mind. Um, those people are very few, very few. And it's even unlikely that the, that the debate will sway it. You know, even those people will probably go into the debate saying that they're undecided, but really they are. You know, they go in going, oh, you know, I'm going to give Trump one more chance. Uh, you know you're not really going to vote for Trump. Uh, same thing if you say it for Biden. Like, oh, I'm going to give Biden one more chance. If Biden does well, maybe I'll vote for him. Now, nah, you're probably already in the bag for Trump. So, um, but you never know. I mean, sometimes people, things just resonate with people. You never know. Um, somebody was talking about online, one of the reporters saying that his, uh, cab driver was a Vietnam vet and he was really mad about the Atlantic article. He heard Trump called, uh, people suckers and losers and he believed it. So, you know, what are you going to do? Um, that's part of the, unfortunately, the, the effectiveness of propaganda. Even people I know who are big Trump fans were a little bit, they were a little bit demoralized by this debate. Um. But, you know, they they also consume a lot of the mainstream media and, you know, it influences them. It influences them. And ultimately, I think they're going to vote for Trump. But, you know, it, we still got a few weeks to go here. Um, and it's funny that this 
uh, is a thing now because it's sort of overshadowed uh, the Melania tapes, which dropped yesterday. And this is Melania's like friend. I don't know what kind of friend uh, records phone conversations with you, but you know, it's just a lot Melania complaining about you know, what we'd all complain about our lives, essentially. And she's got a bunch of stuff to do as the first lady. And, you know, in public, she's very uh, demure and, and quiet. And, you know, I don't blame her for complaining about a lot of this stuff. It doesn't even sound like it's a scandal, really. I'm complacent. I'm the same like him. I support him. I don't no. say enough. I don't do enough. No. Where I am, I'm the only one who is working like a... Asthma, asthma, I know. Christmas stuff that, you know, who gives a f about Christmas stuff and decoration, but I need to do it, right? Yeah, but go ahead, 100%. You have and no then, choice. And, okay, and then I do it, and I say that I'm working on Christmas, uh, planning for the Christmas, and they said, oh, what about the children? They were separated. Give me a break. Yeah, I don't blame her for complaining. I mean, she's trying to be a good first lady, and I think she's pretty good. I mean... As good as any other first lady. I mean, there's been some first ladies who, you know, they say they were all drugged up or whatever. I, I never really saw that. Even, you know, that was Nixon's wife, I think. Uh, they made jokes about her. But, um, you know, I mean, I, Melania doesn't do much of anything, you know, publicly. And I like that. You know, uh, Hillary Clinton trying to be co-president back when Bill Clinton was president got to be really annoying really fast at first it was like oh cool she's gonna try to help but then you know it didn't really work out and people ended up kind of resenting her because she was so bossy and so sort of pushy uh nobody wanted to listen to her after a while and she tried to push through a plan of universal health care uh, and it just didn't work you know and it had nothing to do with the fact she was a woman it had more to do with the fact you know, her plan was just so convoluted and complicated. Everybody kind of went, no, this is that. We can't do this. On top of the fact there were more people who were like, no, universal health care, that's just a pipe dream. We're not going to do that uh, in the United States. So, uh, you know, Melania, you know, they, they make fun of her clothes. They make fun of the way she smiles or if she holds the president's hand. You know, they have their own dynamic. Trump is a billionaire. Uh, she's his third wife, right? And uh, she knows the deal. She knows the deal with him. You know, is it like two crazy teenagers in love? No, I don't think so. It's partly an arrangement. Um, partly because he is so rich. I'm sure she, she likes him a lot, even loves him. But, you know, she has a kid with him, right? So it's like, relax. They have their thing. I mean, everybody has their own weird dynamic. And for them, it seems to work, at least for now. Um, you know, he's in his 70s. I don't think he's going to divorce her for someone younger at this point. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think I think he's ready to finish, finish out with this one. <laughs> and uh, Melania's got problems. I mean, we all got problems, right? I mean, yeah, she's got to be annoyed at all the uh, horrible, horrible coverage. They usually treat the first ladies with kid gloves, even under presidents that they didn't like. You know, George W. Bush's wife, she got a little bit of flack, but not too much. Not too much. I think the only president that got a little flack was George H.W. Bush. You know, I remember them saying like, oh, what is this guy married to his grandma? Because she had like really white, white hair, um, which... And even back then, people were like, oh, man, that's a little, that's over the line. Leave leave the first lady alone. She's nice. And she was. You know, I, I, I don't know what the obsession is with going after Melania. It's just, it's just lame. Uh, you know, it's just desperation on the part of the media. And this woman, you know, recording their phone conversations, I mean, it's a, it's a bit much. It's a bit much that you're going to record the phone conversations of a first lady. I mean, Jesus, these people are desperate. How desperate do you have to be? Like, well, I recorded the, the first lady's conversations to expose that she complains that she has to do a bunch of bullshit. S. Uh, <laughs> we all have to do BS, okay? I have to do BS all the time. 
you know, and I complain about it too. Everybody complains about their own BS. doesn't matter what level you're on. doesn't matter if you have billions of dollars. You complain, right? Everybody complains. Uh, you know, you could be living in a mansion like, uh, I got to get up today and uh, 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 fire the butler and uh, get a new butler. Oh, it's so annoying. Uh, where's my personal assistant? Oh, right. I gave him the day off. Oh, this sucks. Oh, God. I'm out of breakfast burritos. Damn it. I forgot to tell the maid to buy some or whatever. I mean, oh, I got to wait 20 minutes while my personal chef makes it. It's, it's all relative. <laughs> personal chef making breakfast burritos. That, that does sound good. That does sound good. But the grass is always greener. And, uh, you know, I think it's I think it's terrible that they recorded her. There's nothing here uh, other than, you know, a woman complaining, complaining about her life, complaining about her husband a little bit or venting. You know, sometimes you just need to vent. You, you just need to vent. You're not really you're not really going to quit your job. You just vent about it, how annoying it is. Right. And then after you vent about it, you feel a little better. You're like, OK, I can continue working at this crap job. Um, so that's all it is. But uh, uh, Trump and Melania will uh, probably be fine. And, um, you know, uh, and most people are, you know, Trump is in a high risk group because of his age and his weight. But he doesn't seem to have any underlying uh, health risks like diabetes or anything like that. I don't think he has a heart condition. He took uh, hydrochloroquine. Quinn, I mean, if anything, the media, if they were smart, they'd be like, aha, you were taking that. You said as a preventative, why didn't that prevent you from getting it? And, you know, uh, that would that would be sort of a gotcha moment. But now they're not going to get the chance because Trump's going to take two weeks off and, I don't know, sit around the White House and give all his orders via chat, I guess, via Zoom. So hopefully there's a secure line for that. I'd be a little wary about that, Mr. President. These guys, they're trying to get at you. And they, uh, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity since you're kind of in a mildly vulnerable position. So I worry. I worry. So watch yourself, Mr. President. Hope you recover soon. And uh, for those of you freaking out out there, don't freak out. It's all good. Um, the survival rate is extremely high and uh, he doesn't appear to have any symptoms. So he'll probably be fine. Hopefully in a few days he'll, he'll get retested and they'll say, oh, you know, it was a false positive and he could go right back to annoying everybody on Twitter.